right. Right here. So this is what the garage looks like most of the time. Um, and I've had a few people comment and say, ah, oh, how did you do the pit? Um, I'll go through it. I'll give you a quick, a quick rundown on what we did with the pit. So um, as you can see, we've got the snook table in the garage. So you want the garage to be able to be used when you're not using, when you're not doing cars and stuff like that. So um, it's boarded at the moment and these boards just lift straight out and uh, we'll get into the thick of it. So yeah, I'll show you what it is. I'll give you measurements and just tell you how I built it um, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Let's see how we get on. was a bit of a heavy beast so the, the boards have got to be pretty strong. Oh, that's that out of the way. Okay, and then these just pop out. Each one of these boards uh, reinforced with steel so you can see we've got angle iron on the edges of some uh, I don't know what think it's about an inch MDF okay job I've got on today is uh, is the front uh, got the front shock absorbers on the BMW so I only need the front half of the pit exposed I don't need to go all, all the way in um, as you can see she steps down so I've got some bit of lighting in there as well so we can flick the light on and uh, I've got three lights in there but I only use one at the minute because uh, it gets too bright and too hot um, so I just use the one and then use a torch if I need to also I've got power in there so um, a wired in, a plug socket, so if ever you need angle grinder or anything like that, you haven't got to mess about with leads, it's all, in, it's all in the pit. So as far as measurements go, across the internals, um, now what we've got is a, this metal um, angle iron topping on it with, a, with a, another a bead around the inside. So the actual uh, dimensions of the the pit itself, so the internals of that are, it's 80, oh it's 80 and a half centimetres, so it's 805 millimetres across the internals of the angle iron. The actual, um, obviously so when you take away the thickness of the angle iron, the actual hole itself is 81 is 81 and a half, so 800 and, uh, 815, so 815 millimetres is the actual uh, internal dimensions of the, of the pit. And lengthwise, from end to end, it is, uh, whoa, Jesus, what's that? 315 centimetres. So uh, 3,150 millimetres uh, in length from, yeah, from end to end. It's a pretty good size. It all depends on how big your garage is really, doesn't it? To, you know, I've just done this. I needed workspace 
at the front uh, so that it, you know when you're doing bits and bobs that don't need the pit, you need somewhere to stand. So it's pointless completely filling your garage with a pit. You need to have some workspace as well. Um, I got these measurements from a garage. I just went into the garage with my tape measure, had a quick on their pit, and tried to do it of a similar size. Uh, as close as I could, obviously, um, uh, it's probably five mil here and there is not quite right, but it's, it's close enough. And, and the pit jack obviously fits in the hole. Um, that slides along this top rail here. So depth-wise, at its deepest point, this is uh, it's 140 centimeters, um, and again, I did that just to my own uh, height. I kind of I looked at how deep pits were, how far, how, what's the minimum height I could go to. I'm five foot ten, and I thought. Yeah, how, how, what's the, the nearest kind of height that, will, that I can get away with? Um, and that's what I came up with. Okay, let's, uh, let's show you the deep in the hole. Okay, so let's go down into the depths. So, so I put these big steps in. So we can, uh, you can sit on them and work on them if you want to. Uh, and that's what you're looking back out. So this... This angle iron that we've got that goes all the way around the outside, you can see what I've done is the uh, the actual um, the, the tiled. So they've got the concrete. You've got a behind the tiles. We've got concrete floor, garage floor floor that ran about. Uh, it was about four to six inches thick. And uh, so when I've tiled it over, I needed to put an edge on there to get the pit jack and just something to to support the wood. So I just used an angle iron and then welded this bar all the way around the inside to rest the wood onto. And, and that's all it is, just an angle iron with a bar welded to it to give this lip all the way around. So, how did we do it? So when I moved into the house, the guy before who owned it um, had, had dug a small hole in the grass, as I can call it, is a hole in the garage floor. So he cut out, a, a, it used a steel saw, and he cut a section of concrete out of the garage floor, and then just literally dug a hole into the earth. And, and he'd been using it like that, and it was just mud, uh, you know, round the outside, dry mud obviously, because it's, you know, it's within the garage, so it doesn't get wet. So it was very dusty and dirty, um, not good at all. But, you know, it gets the old alarm bells thinking, oh, can we create something here? Gets the, gets the, the brain, you know, working. Can I make it better? Can I do something with it? So, um, that's what I did. And this has been in nearly 20 years. It's, it's not long after we moved into the house did I finish it and get it right. So, it's, it's stood the test of time really well. I've not had any issues with it. And, and what did I do? I got the dimensions, like I was saying, I, I went to the garage down the road, measured what their pit was, the dimensions, the depths, and I thought, how deep do I need it? 140 is about right for my height. So I dug down at the bottom of this, there's six inches of concrete. So I went six inches further than I needed to. The sides, I cut out with a steel saw, the concrete garage floor to the size that I needed. Just literally chopped around the concrete all the way around, dug the concrete away, and then I dug down, but I also dug under the floor in all directions, about phew, getting on for probably eight or nine inches under the concrete floor. So then I got this concrete floor overhanging the edge of the pit. Then what I did was shuttered it. So I, I, I um, no, I didn't tell a lie. I lined it with polythene. So I've got a massive, massive sheet of polythene and I packed it into the bottom of the pit all around all the corners. I got it right in. It was a big old bit of polythene. You can imagine the size of this and it comes all the way up to, well, I think it was, it was almost sort of hit this height. So it was, you know, a real good piece. 
Um, and then I shuttered it. I got I got boards. I got some some MDF and uh, chipboard boarding, and I I put it to the to the edge of the concrete uh, garage floor with a small gap at the top, so I could backfill it with with concrete. And that's what I did. So I shuttered the whole lot, and then it was a bit of a palaver getting the concrete in there. I was having to shovel it in. And I backfilled the whole lot with, uh, with 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 concrete mix, and then banged the sides so it all fell down. And just tapped it, tapped it all the way around, tapped all the boards all the way around with the hammer, and you could tell when it was right. The sound changed when it was all packed in solid. Left that to go off. Took all the shuttered boards out. Now the weight behind these boards was incredible. I didn't expect it to be as much. I knew it was going to be heavy. So when I'd got the boards in all the way around, I, was, I had pieces of wood go from one side to the other to stop the boards bowing in and to a, I got it right almost there is a slight change in shape here a little bit um, not a lot just a small bit there you can see where it's come out slightly but it, on a whole it was a pretty decent shuttering um, but they say I, I did underestimate the weight slightly and it did start to just move move inwards but I say I've got these big pieces of wood all the way all the way across all the way down to hold the sides from, from coming in. So I left that um, to, to go off and then finished the top off with brick. So I just bricked in the top, cement, sand and cemented bricks into the top part um, and a job's a good one. Now, like I say, I'd ran the wire, I'd ran the wire through as well. I'd drilled a hole up and, and ran a wire into the into the fuse box uh, for the for the power, for the lighting and the and the socket. Once all that was done, um, I got this. Obviously, this this concrete hole you know now all shuttered and, and gone off. I got the flooring in. It was all nice and level and hard. So I tiled the whole lot and built these stairs. I just built the stairs up with uh, with blocks. So yeah, all bricked up round the top, and then I tiled the whole garage. Oh, pardon me. I mean, and these, the tiling was a laugh because um, I went down B and Q. They got this deal on these grey tiles, and cheap as chips. They really were. There was a cracking price. I can't remember how much they were, but they weren't expensive. Um, and so I got enough to do the whole garage, the pit, and everything. And then it's the adhesive is the issue because when I came to to buy the adhesive, it actually cost me more for the the tile adhesive than it did to to buy the tiles. <laughs> so anyway, but tiled the whole lot, the whole garage right the way through, uh, tiled in the pit, and it's just it's been brilliant. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's it's just a cracking bit of thing. It's just something great to have in your garage. I mean, it's a pit. It's an inspection pit. And it's in my garage at home. It's amazing. Um, yeah, and whenever I need it, I'd pop the top off, come down here, get a car in, do what I've got to do, and uh, yeah, it makes life so much easier, it really does. The pit jack, I managed to pick that up second hand. Um, you know, it's a little bit worn, but it's it does a job. It, it, it's great, you know, it, it lifts it lifts the cars up and uh, drops them down again. Uh, and again, it just, it's, it's, yeah, it just makes it a little bit more professional, you know, get the old pit jack and jack the stuff up and... Uh, yeah, it's great, great for the kit. Um, I don't know what else I can say about this other than uh, it did take a bit of doing. Uh, you know, it it did take a bit of um, a bit of digging out and all the rest of it because I say the hole that was there originally was tiny, and the the concrete wasn't cut out fully. But um, yeah, these these uh, you know can either hire a steel saw with a with a diamond blade in it to cut the concrete. And it goes through it like butter. It doesn't take a lot of chopping. There's a lot of dust, but once you've chopped it out, it's done. Um, and uh, yeah, like I say, I mean, it's an amazing space. It's an amazing space that we've created under here for, for, for working in. And I've not had any issues with it filling with water or anything like that. It's um, the, the polythene must just, you know, seal it up well. So uh, yeah, it's a good job, it's a good job. I hope that's been of use to you. If you're thinking of um, doing one or having a bash at trying to trying to stick a pit in your garage, um, I mean, yeah, if you're doing a few jobs, it's worth it. And obviously, if it's just the odd oil change, then it's, it's not. Um, but uh, I've had plenty of use out of this. Yeah, 
Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs>